Hey y'all, Nicole is about to pick my books and I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Um, I don't know if she's gonna pick things that she's read before that she thinks I'll like or just like she did her research. I'm excited, but I'm nervous. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mo and today I have a special guest. Y'all know who it is. Y'all heard my name. Y'all know my face. Now you know my face. It's me, Nicole. The realest, the baddest. The realest, the that baddest. That girl. And you better be listening to my podcast. It's always in the description. It's always in the description. It's always in the description. It says Bestie Podcast in all caps. We have four episodes out. Yeah. That's four hours of entertainment yeah. for all of you. Yeah. Thank you. So, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail and the title, mm -hmm. she will be picking what I read. So, oh, well. she has this brilliant PowerPoint behind us. We're going to move out the way so you can see it as well Thank with you, this Canva. live time. These are books that some of them she knows and some of them she didn't. She just researched and cross-referenced to see mm -hmm. if I read them. So... If she don't know, she's gonna look up a description and she's gonna sell it to me. So, I will. Okay. Let's see. Let's get Are it. Are you ready? Okay, first and category. There's, categories. there's there's four categories. Category one. Black <gasps> oh, I don't wanna read these. Black woman being loved on and gay shit. <gasps> Thank you, TikTok. Oh my god. Um, I don't know if this one's out yet. Is it? It might not be. I so really want to read this. And I, this has been yet. on I've been wanting to read this for a long ass time. I have to pick. Yes. You have Damn. to pick. So uh, do you know what these are about? Pretty much. Um these two, these are like, I think, retellings of like, uh, yeah. not Jane Austen. Jane Austen? Whoever this a classic is, white bitch is. Yeah, I think, because this might be a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, and I think this one is a retelling Sense of- Sense of Sensibility. Yeah. Yeah. I just watched somebody's vlog reading this. Mm -hmm. Um, Booking it with Atia. I'll link that down below. But I don't know if I'm really into those, because like, I don't- I was thinking yeah. these are, these weren't. Then I read the first book in this series. It wasn't really giving. So it's out of these two. It's out of these two. The one I'm most excited about is this one. But I don't think like I, can, I have access to this one. So I think I'm going to pick this one. Because okay. I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. Okay. And I literally saw a TikTok and then someone was like, they're trying to act like a light-skinned stud is, is like compassionate and super kind. Like this is this is a uh, magical realism. <laughs> 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 they said this is fantasy. Yeah, magical realism. So I'm definitely picking Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding. Yes. Okay. I know there's like a reality TV show <laughs> type, type beat. <laughs> per. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> I this knew this was gonna be on here. <laughs> and I, I read these. But when have you reread them recently? That's the thing. These, oh Lord. These oh, are about, this is gonna take me months. These are about rereads. This is about rereading. I'm thinking, things. oh, this is just something I can um, read for a week. I will say I started reading the first book of this one yesterday at our cousin's graduation. Is she tapping it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of think in the book, Carmen, she's kind of a bitch. America <laughs> for her? America No. Because America oh. Pura did not is not Carmen from the books. Carmen from the movies is that Carmen from the books. She got a f attitude and she needs to be humbled. Um, hmm. But this is my favorite book series. I started rereading it like a couple of months ago. I had jury duty in February and I reread one of them. Um, this is like a really, it's like, it has like magic. It has like darkness and evil, like light and stuff like that. It's also kind of like one of the characters is supposed to be like the, their town's like Boo Radley, if you know anything about culture and literature. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> if you know anything about that. Um, Not she so elitist. I really, I really want you to read this one because I think you will like these. And like there's, it's just good drama, cliffhangers. It has to do with that old small town. Like everybody knows everybody. They think they know what they're supposed to do type shit. So I think you should read this one. This one is like the only really book series I could think of that I read as a kid and like that you haven't read because we've already done Hunger Games. How you know already I haven't read done... that? Huh? How you know I haven't read that? I said that I haven't read. You never like, read that? I mean, I mean, like you haven't like reread already, like recently. Oh. Because you already did Hunger Games. The gag is another crazy series. Divergent. If I could pick for you, I would pick for you, but you have to pick Okay, yourself. so the gag is, I knew she was going to put this on here, so I'm definitely going to pick this one for her. Um, I'm interested in this, but like not really. This could be like a second time, like you go back and yeah, like I'm it. not really like. I remember the second book. I really liked I really it when liked. I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. This one, I'm definitely gonna reread eventually. So I'm gonna get to this at some point. I know, my but gosh. I'm just really overwhelmed with that one right now. But I'm gonna do this for the girl. She Thank she you. been wanting me to read this for a long ass time. So. And mind you, the movie on this, don't f watch it. I never seen it. It's not good. I mean, as a movie, it's fine, but as a movie compared to the book, that bitch changed everything and it pissed me off. But it's fine. Number it's two. Fine. Self improvement. Self improvement. <laughs> because let's just say I need to improve. In the era of 2024, we're working on ourselves. We're becoming better people. Okay. I did not um, expect this. I haven't read nonfiction like all year. Yeah, I, I only read fiction. And I'm trying to get you well, out. Also, I don't think I even read a memoir this year yet. I don't um, know, girl. I'm scared. 
She's about to look up what they're about because yes. I don't know. Okay. How self love is the key to unlocking your your greatness. Good vibes, good life. Yes. Next king. So that's what this one is about. Just basically improving your mindset, manifesting positive in your life. How to like think good so like good things come of you. You know what I mean? Okay. This one, this little art now doing. This. I really this one is drawn to me because of like just the vastness of the title. This little art not giving a. F we don't give a. F and this one is about just. Finding meaning for what you find important and only engage in values that they can control. So basically just like not caring about shit that you can't like fix or whatever. And I do like that it's orange. I really do like the color. Yes, um, I've been obsessed with orange. So this one actually was recommended to me by my therapist. Shout out to you, Jennifer. Love you down. Bitch. And I actually started reading this one a little bit through audiobook. And I think you should read through audiobook because it helps out a lot. And I really liked it. I didn't finish it because it expired because I have ADHD and I forget that I have audiobooks sometimes. So it's like a philosopher and like this young guy coming in. And like this philosopher will like will say all like the like hypothetical things and like challenge like the guy's like views. And so like every chapter or like the whole book is basically them like, having a conversation. The young boy like questioning him being like, well, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? And like all that stuff. So I really like it. It helped me think differently. It did kind of hurt my feelings a little bit a couple of times but it was like a good hurting your feelings where you want to like improve so you can pick whichever one you want this one's not even in the running <laughs> um, i've been seeing this forever and i never got to it so like how interesting could it be for me i think i'm gonna read this one because you've actually read it and it sounds interesting but that seems like something dialogue pace is fast mm -hmm. paced i'll get through it because mm -hmm. i'm really not a non-fiction girly yeah. so i'm just trying to find something easy and this has like this has like an aura of like I mean, it's real, but it has like an aura of fiction because like the way that it's written. Real. So. Real. Okay, last category. You ready? Oh, okay. I'm ready. I'm scared. Memoirs. Oh, she put a trigger warning. Yeah. Whoa. Because I want. I, <gasps> is it scary? No. So. I this one. I, this one I'm actually kind of really excited about because like this one is similar to like the writing of like crying in H Mart. How like they use oh. like how she used food to like describe stuff. This one like uses like the element of a house like to describe stuff. But let me give you the little descriptions. Know My Name is a memoir written by Chanel Miller. It talks about her experience being sexually assaulted by a Stanford University athlete, Brock Turner, in 2015. In the aftermath, the court case, all that kind of stuff. So it's really her retelling of that. That's why I put the trigger warning because it talks of sexual abuse. And we want to make sure we're keeping her really safe and happy. Um, so this one, everything I know, uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about this one. Mm. This is a memoir about love and relationships, and it's an honest account of the highs and lows of modern dating. And what I love about it is it like focuses on like self love and female friendships. I love things that talk about female friendships, and I think that's also why I love the Sister for the Traveling Pants movies and books so much. I honestly believe female friendships are like one of the most special friendships to ever exist in the whole entire world, and like they're just like so pure and so sacred. So anything that talks about the beauty of female friendships, I support. So this. This one in the dream house another memoir is about an abusive relationship with her ex-girlfriend she refers to her as like the woman in the dream house and so i think she uses like a lot of like descriptions and like metaphors to explain like what happened in the house like describe what happened in her abusive relationship i don't want to read this one um i just feel like it's gonna be like too much i've been really interested in this one that one i never thought was gonna be up my alley but the way you just described it i kind of want to read that too mm -hmm. I mean, who's to say I'm not gonna ever get to it? Yeah, you know? and I got these books from trusted girlies on uh. Book Talk. Girlies that I that recommended books that I've already liked, and like yeah. compared these books to those books, and then just black girls because I always trust a black woman. I think I'm gonna pick her. <gasps> okay, I'm still gonna read this one. I still want to eventually, but okay, yeah, <laughs> yay. And then okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, I guess y'all gonna see me reading these. I think I'm going to read all the like standalone books in this video but then i'm gonna do beautiful creatures as its own vlog so yeah thanks thank you so much uh she put a lot of research into this this has been an ongoing project for four to five months i had to scroll um, through people her work full time people work full time piece. people got things to do and, and she made this beautiful jobs. thing she did she she did the thing okay i'm sorry i'm sorry leah angela bassett she did the thing you see <laughs> angela bassett she did the thing Oh, let's go back and show them what, I, what, I'm, what I'm picking. Because I don't feel like putting it on the screen. I'm being lazy. Recap. I picked this one. Mm -hmm. Boink. I picked this one. Boink. I picked that one. Boink. <laughs> I picked that one. Boink. Boink. <laughs> so, Period. Yeah. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all whenever I read the first book. Bye. Bye. Listen to my podcast. Listen to her podcast. Yeah.
Hey y'all, I have already started the first book of Nicole's picks and it is the nonfiction self-improvement one. It is called The Courage to be Disliked, How to Free Yourself, Change Your Life, and Achieve Real Happiness by Ichiro Kashimi and Fumatake Koga. I was gonna update y'all at like 15 or 20 percent but I never got to it. I never made time. I'm on 50 percent. <sighs> Also, I love Libby Down. Like I love access to books for free. I just love the library system, like all the resources and just like the help. I just love the library. I love literacy. I love reading. I love everything that has to do with books, okay? But telling me that four people are waiting for me whenever I have two weeks of a loan is crazy business. Like at least wait till like I get to like three days out or something like that. Like now I just feel like the pressure is on. The pressure is on. And then I found out the other night that it was on Spotify, but I used Nicole's and she wants to use it. So I'm like bowing out gracefully. So I'm gonna finish the rest of it with the ebook. But the book is not hard to read or anything like that. It's 288 pages, I think. And it's really just dialogue heavy. So it's just like back and forth conversation. So that does read pretty fast. If I really like lock in and try to read. If you don't remember how Nicole described it, it is, it's like two people are sitting in like a counseling session, but they're just having a conversation or a debate. And it's the philosopher, it's an older man. And the audiobook, he's kind of got an accent like from Europe. I don't know if it's British or what, it's different. And then the other person is like youth, but it's a young man. I say the way it's set up is kind of like a counseling session because it's like the first night they have a conversation and then the second night, but it's like a back and forth kind of thing. And it's, it's just laid out kind of like, it's not even interview style, but that's how it looks on the ebook. I'm enjoying it. I didn't think I was gonna really enjoy it because this is out of my comfort zone. I, the only nonfiction I've read in recent is like memoirs. Like I don't really read self-improvement books. I don't think I've ever read a self-improvement book. Um, I just always felt like they're gonna be like corny things that I wouldn't take anything from. And even if I don't take anything valuable from this, I do feel like I'm entertained and that's something of value to me. So, but like this nonfiction is reading kind of fiction. Cause I kept looking at the tags on Goodreads and it says nonfiction, self-help, philosophy, personal development. I went to school for psychology and some things do talk about uh, philosophy and this philosopher is really heavily talking about um, Adlerian psychology and using that as like the base of a lot of the arguments and standpoints that he has, which is interesting, but like, I don't really like philosophy because there's so many open-ended things. I've told y'all before, like one of the reasons why I don't like poetry is because I like, which you would think I like math the way I'm just like, I need a straight answer. Like, I don't want to be wrong about this. I need to know, I don't need to have so many possibilities. But philosophy, there's so many ways to attack a certain one thing. Something that you think can be basic, can be very complex. And that's what like the philosopher is talking about. A lot of different things, honestly. I'm not gonna tell you everything because quite honestly, some things I'm just like reading and I'm just like not really absorbing to be real. Some of it, I'm just like, wow, this is interesting. Yeah, I put that, it seems that the youth is trying to understand human nature, but also trying to poke holes in the philosopher's logic at the same time. The philosopher will say something like, oh, you're unhappy because of you. Like you chose that. Like you don't have the courage to be happy. And the young person's like, dude, what the f I'm depressed. <laughs> and say, for example, you have a goal. Say like, I want to be a um, bodybuilder. And you're like, damn, if, if only I lost all this weight, I'd be a bodybuilder. But like you put that excuse in front of it. So like, if you don't try, you always have that to land on. Something that was in the book was like, oh, I have a friend that's a novelist and he's always saying like with his work schedule, he can't write, but like that just saves him from putting out mediocre work and like hearing feedback. And I was like, damn, damn. Now I see what Nicole meant when she said like, it kind of hurt her feelings a little bit when the, like she got to like chapter three or four of the book and then her loan went, went away. Oh, I put, I quite possibly could never be a philosopher. There's so many possibilities and viewpoints to some of the most basic things, let alone the complexities of human nature. I simply just want the answers. And then I put that in emoji that's like, I love that emoji, the ones that are like, <laughs> um, yeah, 50%. I don't know when I'll finish it. I've been reading it now for three days, I think. Um, and I'm also reading two other books at the same time, which I don't usually do, but like, I'm kind of in my bag. Like I'm filming two different videos at the same time type shit. And then I'm also trying to read a, another thing for enjoyment. I'll probably update y'all whenever I'm done with the book, to be honest, because I don't really, I feel like this kind of book, like, do y'all want to hear about this? Do y'all like, because I feel like the only way I'll talk about this is, is telling you everything that happens in it. And I don't know if you're interested in this. I don't know if you'll ever read this. I don't know. Because this is not something I would give five stars or one star, really. I'd probably give it three. We'll see what I think when I'm done with it. Hey, y'all. Long time no see. For y'all, it'd probably be like a second. But I have not talked to y'all in like maybe a week, week and a half. Because I never really realized reading multiple books at a time makes you take forever to read one book. So like the updates and the progress that I was making, it just felt so like snail pace. And I was just like, I don't have nothing to talk to these about so anyway i actually finished the courage to be disliked oh i didn't even rate it i might rate it i might not i'm trying to see that was cool i probably will not pick up another self-improvement book for a while i think i put so much pressure on them to like change my life and do all this stuff and it's like okay one book is not gonna like radically change my life in the grand scheme i haven't read 
I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it has. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. But I was like going into this kind of like, oh, this ain't really gonna do nothing. And like that kind of like shaped my, my view of the book. But like some things I picked up on and I was like, okay. Okay, because I have had a problem in the past, like people pleasing, and sometimes I still do. I'm, I'm like working on it, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Like I used to hate saying no. I'd be like, damn, what if they don't like me? But it's like, you're grown. Why does it matter who gives a about you and who doesn't? Like, surround yourself with the people that like you, and then like if they actually do love you and like you, they can take no and and hear boundaries respectfully. I finished it. It took me a long time. It was only like 288 pages, and it took me a long time. Sorry if you hear some like cackling and screaming. My mom is on the phone. She need to be at work. Anyway, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so I want to know what's funny. Yeah, that was the first book that Nicole had recommended me. So I'm going to next read Everything I Love, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton because my loan from the library came in a couple days ago and that's like 14 days so I have like 10 or 9 days left so I need to read that because no one's waiting on it right now but everybody always ends up waiting on something when I got it so I'm gonna do that and then next I really want to read Devon and Chris like that's the one I'm like really excited about but I didn't want to like start the video with that one and have like my expectations up you know so I'm gonna read that one and then I don't know what else besides beautiful creatures there was but beautiful creatures would be a whole separate video I don't know if I said that but beautiful creatures it'll be a part two because that's like four books and i think they're pretty thick i think i don't know i might have a rating at the end of this i just really haven't thought about it since i put down i had finished weight of blood the weight of blood by tiffany d jackson won't get into that maybe on my wrap up maybe there's just so many layers and things uh tiffany d jackson the author that you are then i'm also trying to read that new release the arc that i have before it gets released because I think that's the nature of an arc. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm just like not in the mood like for like, uh, I'm just not in the mood for it, honestly. I'm pushing myself through. I'm on 30% of it, so I'm just like, I just need to sit down and devote like a couple hours, but it never seems like there's a couple of hours to be had, but even when there is, I don't want to. So, tis what it is. I've been talking about nothing. I finished the book, that's it, that's it. And we're gonna move on to the next one. It'll be another day. I probably will not start it today because I have a lot of things going on today. Very busy girl, very busy girl. But yeah, bye. Hey y'all. So I started Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding by Chinsia C. Higgins the other day and I'm on 18%. Yeah, yeah. What was I talking about? Oh, Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding. If you don't know about it, I'll tell you like some popular tropes. It's fake dating, forced proximity, reality TV. And we're following two, I think they're both lesbians. So they're on this show called Instant I Do. Basically, people get paired up on the show to be together for six weeks. And like they're, they're planning a wedding and they're trying to like make their family and friends believe the chemistry and believe that they're actually going to get married to a stranger. I cannot imagine literally just bringing a random person around my family and friends and then being like, oh, we're actually getting married in a month and a half. That's never going to be realistic for me. Um, one of the characters is not out. And I was like, wow, how is that going to work? Yeah. And then one of them is a tall, light-skinned stud with locks and a tattoos, and she's a gym influencer. And you're trying to spin to me that this is it. This is a a real lover girl, more like a real girl. Sorry, sorry. But anyway, apparently there's gonna be like different challenges on this show. I don't know anything about that, but we'll see. We'll see. I like that they're both physically attracted to each other already. Like that's a good that's a good basis for everything i think chris i guess went into this hoping to find love but like literally by the description and she's got all these people in her dms like why don't you try the people in your dms first so we'll see we'll see oh but the thing is with the show so you can either get married at the end or like if you fall in love like six weeks or you can win a hundred thousand dollars each i'm sorry but i'm taking the money every time is there not a thing where like you can take the money and then like stay with that person right after like Sorry. People are like, marriage is a business transaction, but like, I want the money. But I'm like, do they get married and 100K? I just don't, I don't know. That's where it's a gray area for me. I don't really know anything about that. This is actually like the only book that I've read all of Pride that's like queer. So shame on me, but at least I'll have one book. You gotta look at the bright side. But yeah, I'll see y'all if I have something interesting to say. Bye. Okay, we're sorry to interrupt your regularly scheduled program, but 
Oathbound, the third book in the Legend Born Cycle series by Tracy Dion that's going to come out March 4, 2025, the cover was revealed. I'll have to put it on the screen because it's not on Goodreads yet. But Simon Teen had um, posted it. It looks so good. Yeah, I just had to say that. I definitely will have to read Legendborn and Bloodmarked again just to understand what's going on. It, doesn't it eat? And I'm gonna have to buy it, so I have to wait till it becomes like a paperback. So maybe 2026. Crazy. <laughs> hey, I just had to tell y'all, Chinsia is so unserious. Okay, so I think I told y'all one of them is not out and her family is super religious. So this is about to be some shit, okay? 31%, girl, why is the church called Greater Rock of Abundant Salvation Missionary Baptist Tabernacle of the Living Word? <laughs> you know, black people. I love us for real. Okay, I know I was like laughing and giggling just a second ago, but it just got tense at 32%. <sighs> so like I grew up in a Baptist church and a lot of my family is very God fearing and like religious and I'm not anymore. Um, I don't know if I ever will. I just feel like it was something that I just grew up in and it was just like the normal. And then I found out I didn't have to do that anymore. So I don't like a lot of my family doesn't know that I'm a fruit. Like, like my closest cousins, like my best friends know and like y'all know, but like my family does not know. So this is like, it's getting me, it's giving me a lot of anxiety because it's literally like Devon's storyline is like mine because she's like literally walked into church with her fiance hand in hand and the fiance is like more mass presenting. And uh, her mom was like, the f <laughs> the f and she's like, I am then. And I'm like, oh, like I could cry. Like if it gets even more intense, I could cry. Yeah, I just had to get personal with y'all right quick because I was just like, this is probably not going to hit for some people the way it's hitting for me right now. So if I'm like overly jazzing up this book, you you will know why. Um, there's a little part of me in this. Yeah. The thing happened. Um, I'm crying. So. <laughs> hey, besties. I really finish Devon and Chris plan a wedding and um we're gonna talk about that but first I'm gonna give you my rating for the courage to be disliked I did that like days after I read it and we're not surprised okay characters four atmosphere five writing style five plot four intrigue five logic six enjoyment five three stars indeed I never thought it was gonna get more than three um hey it was gonna either not be rated or it was gonna be three okay so Devon and Chris plan a wedding characters eight okay let's talk about it i love how in tune they were with each other the two love interests i i wanted the both of them like i if i could just be like a fly on the wall if i could be a third a throuple if you will if i could just oh i would tear the both of them up them up disrespectfully 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 um okay and it really was eight because there was a little bit of bigotry in there. And I was like, hmm, can't give you your tens, can't. Uh, okay, atmosphere 10. Cause I don't know, I used to think atmosphere was just like the setting, but I think it's like how you, how like the author makes you feel and like, you know, a bunch of different factors. So I give that a 10. Cause I was, y'all literally seen me, the last clip I talked to y'all, I think I was tearing up. Like there were so many points of this that I just really felt like drawn to Devon's story. Like I felt like, there was a big part of me in this story. Not to be like self-centered or whatever, but like, uh, um, when things are personal, it makes me enjoy it more. I don't know. Uh, writing style 8.5, only because like some things, really good writing, um, Chintia, love it. Some things were just like, I think this is because I'm not the quickest up there sometimes. So like, sometimes they would be talking and I'd be like, what are they talking about? Like, what? And then I had to get to like, the end of the conversation and I'd be like, ah, oh, this is healthy communication between adults. This is being vulnerable outside of therapy. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Okay, plot seven, intrigue 10, logic eight, enjoyment nine. That came out to be 8.64 and that was 4.75 stars. Like this is pretty much a five star read. 
I should have just made it five star, but like the numbers didn't lie this time. Because it wasn't fully five for me, but it was so close. Like I was giggling, crying, screaming, throwing up. Like I was living my best life. Like honestly, this has never made me feel so like single in my life. I, I just feel like I need someone really bad. And I haven't felt like that in a long time. Like it happens every once in a while when I read a romance book, actually. Like a long time was a stretch. It happens. I'm a I'm a lover girl. Like it happens weekly. But like to be like this this down bad like it <sighs> so yeah now we're gonna move on to the last book it is gonna be everything i know about love by dolly alderton i have three days until that hold is done so it needs to be done i started it not too long ago and i wasn't really like so we'll see we'll see i'm gonna try to give it i'm gonna try to give it a fair chance because i didn't really do that for courage to be disliked but yeah this is only going to be the last one for this video. Again, Beautiful Creatures is the other thing that Nicole wanted me to read. That's going to be a whole different video because that's a four book series. I don't know if I'll talk to you about the book, but I'm going to try to read a little bit of it today. But then mom is outside tonight, so probably won't get a lot done. 5% into it and I'm just having a hard time, which like I usually have a hard time getting into books. That's like, I'm no stranger to that, but I just don't really care. And I really feel like I shouldn't read it Ugh. but I hate that because it's always like whenever I have like a video idea or something like that where it's like a book that I don't want to read but I'm like you gotta power through you gotta power through but I'm like should I just pick another book that Nicole picked I don't know maybe I should talk to her but I wanted this to be posted by tomorrow so really yesterday but uh, you know what I mean life I was having fun I never wanted to read a memoir about someone I don't really care about because I don't really know who this person is I don't know what they do I don't know but I don't really care. So I'm going through that. Um, I know y'all would suggest me to just DNF it because I've been reading other things in between and the other things are catching my attention a lot faster. I don't know. I just wish a book would just start off like hella in action, like quick to the point, keep up the momentum, not like the whole time. Cause then it would be like, you know, nothing is really happening cause everything's always happening type. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But I'll try to update y'all if I read some more. I just really don't feel like it. I don't know, I'm pushing myself to warp. Hey y'all, long time no see. I DNF'd everything I know about Love by Dolly Alderton. I got to 25%, I did give it a fair chance. I gave it a fair chance. And I have a history of pushing myself through books and it was getting to the point where I was like in a slump and I was not wanting to read anything. And I was trying to do this for this video. I'm not reading that. So I was like, oh, I should read another book. I ended up reading another book that Nicole picked, but it wasn't, I'm trying to pick out of the same genre. So I am currently trying to read In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I have the audiobook. It's five hours long. So I feel like I'm set for more success than I was with Do Dolly Alderton's. Right now, I'm just at the very beginning of it. I'm reading something else right now, but I just wanted to let y'all know that I was moving on. Yeah, I hope you guys are happy for me. That took a lot for me. Like I, I'm getting stronger by the day. I really feel like I'm really a reader for real. Like I've done enough things, of course, but sometimes I feel like with these video concepts, it needs to be more what you call it. So I'm really happy that Nicole picked more than one for each su subject. I'm also realizing that because I've only read celebrity memoirs, these memoirs that I'm reading, I'm like, wow, this is what a memoir can be. Like there's messages and thought provoking things and just like lessons to be learned. I mean, like some of that stuff is in celebrity memoirs. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, but like, yeah. It's like someone could take one chunk of their life, a phase of their life, and really expand on something. That's how I'm feeling about Carmen's writing right now. You know what? I love reading a book or just consuming any kind of media where like a person, you could just tell is just so well read and they know how to get their stream of consciousness down and make it make sense. She bringing up stuff that I didn't even really like think about. Like, you know, people talk about like um, how a lot of the Disney villains are queer and it's just like, what does that really mean? Like, why are y'all making them you know what I mean? And she's talking about that. I'm like, wow, there's certain things in there that I never really thought of. Just like how people view women and especially in relationships and what that means. Cause like I've been in a relationship with a woman before and people don't get it. <laughs> people don't get it. Like a lot of people, a lot of straight women I've heard say like, oh, I'm so tired of men. Like I'm just gonna move over to women. When I tell you, <laughs> there will be no rest. You you will rest when you're dead. You will be happy when you're dead. That's crazy to say. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I started getting pessimistic about love a little bit. So this kind of book is not really helping that. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but really is anything. But uh, I don't know what I was saying. I just came on here to say I'm enjoying it as much as I can enjoy it. Um, I'm on, I'm on 25% of 
well that, that's what it says on the ebook but the audiobook is less i don't know how the audiobook is at 22 percent. okay so it's like three percent difference dream house is queer villainy and all the chapters are dream house as dream has as and it's just like the theme of what the um she's gonna be talking about and it's starting to get into a little bit of um emotional abuse i already knew going into this that it was domestic abuse with two queer people i didn't know anyone's sexualities or how they identify or anything like that carmen grew up really religious and having a lot of different relationships with men and thinking that that was like the normal and then came across someone and i don't really know if there was ever like a moment where i read that it was just like oh i'm gay it was just like i always thought i had girl crushes and then this person came up to me and there's intention behind it and attraction and then it went from there and this person that she's entertaining and is kind of with already is in a relationship and it seemed like it was open and now they're trying to figure out if it's poly and i feel like that's already gonna be messy um but this is a memoir so it's so weird because like i'm trying to not detach from this and make it read as fiction because this is someone's real experiences but the way it's reading i just feel like no like not no way like none of this can't happen but like you know what i mean the way she reads it is very poetic not really slam poetry but like that kind of like cadence is like and then this happened and then this it's very like is that lyrical i don't know child but I had to come in and say that because I'm kind of zooming through this. I, st I started really reading it today. Okay, really, I think every single person has some kind of imbalance or something in our brains. Like, no one's perfect and then there's life. Like, all this shit that's happening and that has happened and will happen, all of that and just, like, people's upbringing, all of that just brings up a whole thing of complex things. If you're with me, you're with me, okay? Basically, everybody's fucked up, right? No one's perfect. You really don't know somebody until you know somebody. You think things are on the up and up. And then something switches and you're like, oh, you're, you're a little bit off. You really don't know until you know. Certain relationships where it'd be like familial, friends, romance, you don't know who a person is really until you get them in different kind of contexts and experiences. And it's just trippy to me. Like the human experience is really insane. I'm reading this and I'm just like, it's starting to read like a thriller to me because I'm. it's just getting like worse. And it's hard to be like, this person isn't necessarily a bad person but they are you see who the person's parents are and it's like okay well they had some people just don't have any chance but also no because i've seen that multiple times where people have come from really bad upbringings and they become a stand-up person that like did the work healed all kinds of things so then it's like that's not an excuse but it's very hard to get out of and everything is so complex like everyone's traumas and abuse and things like that and neglect and all that it just it just it's different it makes a whole it's a whole formula for something different yeah i don't know i just feel like i said a bunch of nothing but if you were here with me, I appreciate you. Back to this. I'm on, I'm over halfway now. I got like two and a half hours of the audiobook left. So I'll see y'all when it's finished. Well, I'll probably see y'all before it's finished. Let's be real. Okay, so I did finish In the Dream House. So I did read it and I was like stuck on what I should, um, how I should even rate something like this. And at first I was just gonna not rate it. And then I was like, let me just see what I would end up with. Cause usually I always say, I typically say with a memoir, if I didn't enjoy it, I would just not rate it if it wasn't a five. And I just feel like also like giving it a five is just like, does it take away from like the importance of it sometimes kind of thing? So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I just feel like it's always something in the back of my mind about a memoir. Like this is somebody's experiences. Like to rate it is kind of, is it devaluing? Or is it like, what's the word? Not empathizing, you know? I don't know but I did have to read what the people were saying and I watched a, a video of someone talking about how they read it and I was like okay um I don't really have super articulate words to describe but I found out there's a different genre that I've never read before well I probably have and I didn't know but speculative horror um it is a genre of fiction well I guess fiction but this is not fake so I don't know people were using that as like it was like a lens written through this but it's um it uses emotion to evoke feelings of terror disorientation or pity which a lot of Carmen's writing did. It's like so many, so many of the scenes I was there for. And this is just coming from someone that I never experienced domestic violence or domestic abuse. And I cannot relate to a lot of these things. A lot of these things that Carmen wrote about, you just will not understand unless you've been through something very similar or at least like in that same nature. And sometimes with some of this, I was grappling with like, if I have been abused, because people are just imme immediately think abuse sometimes can just be physical. The more I'm getting older, I'm realizing there's so many forms of emotional abuse that and mental abuse, I just never even thought to be a thing. Like you think, I grew up thinking that everyone had the best intentions and people were just not out to, you know, tear people down. And sometimes I still have that naivety to me. So to think that like someone that you think loves you and cares about you is literally preying on your downfall 
uh it is just insane to me it's insane to me and i have been in similar situations in that i've been around people that we both served each other's purposes for each other or whatever and it should have been time to grow apart and, and move around basically and it didn't and it became toxic and harmful and it was not to this extent but it just made me reflective basically is what i'm trying to say it made me reflective and just really like wow what does abuse really mean like it's just people throw it around and it's just like I think of so many different things but it, it's complex like a lot of different things that humans you know experience yeah I'll tell y'all what I rated it so I gave characters seven which I won't really explain this stuff I'm just gonna give you the ratings uh atmosphere eight writing style 10 plot 10 intrigue 10 logic eight enjoyment seven which is it was all weird because this is a memoir I, I you know um that actually was like 4.75 but I decided to round it up to five because I was like I'm not gonna be like 4.75 you know like what but yeah I'm giving it five stars. I feel like this is something that will stick with me for a while and I would revisit it later on. Like, you know, as you live more life, certain books you want to come back and revisit. I've been having that with books recently. So I, I would definitely read this again. And I would recommend this if you if you can read something like this. Um, trigger warnings for homophobia, um, strong language. Like it's vulgar, um, SA. Uh, there's just a lot, honestly, check up on content warnings if you're interested in this at all based on what i said definitely check it out before you check it out that was that so i'm just gonna wrap up really what i read for nicole's picks and then we'll be done so i did read the courage to be disliked by ichiro kishimi and fumatake koga i ended up giving that one three stars that was the like self-improvement learn not to give a f basic kind of thing then i read devon and chris plan a wedding by chinsia c higgins 4.75 which i'm like damn should that be five and then lastly i read in the dream house by carmen maria machado i did give that one five stars yeah i hope y'all enjoyed if y'all want to see another video like this i definitely will wrangle nicole up and we will do a video but um yeah again i hope y'all enjoyed i'll see y'all next time bye <laughs>